What makes you different is what makes you Spider-Man. Hey, how's it going guys? My name is Orlando Blau Jr., but you may call me Lando. And this past weekend, I saw the film Into Spider-Verse, the Marvel comic Mosh Ram Bum. If you don't know Sabaton, you should try and look them up. So Miles Morales, he is half black, half Puerto Rican, and his mom is Puerto Rican. Call me old fashioned, but shouldn't you be taking your father's name? I mean, I, I don't know, maybe it's just a different time and era that I don't quite understand. He's also an artist, and he decides to do what is best for him, and that is to go to school. Because he's high school, high school kid. Go to school and do the best that he can in high school stuff. Also, he's an artist, and along the way of doing his artistry as a tagger on the streets, but not really on the streets because he does it for safe reasons, not because you know, he's a gang member or anything like that, you know. Just because you tag doesn't necessarily mean you're in a gang or anything. Doing his own little mural, he gets bitten by a spider! Oh no! And he just flicks it away. The next day, he's like, oh crap, why am I sticking on to stuff? Why? Why? Eh, eh. Yeah, damn this crazy glue! And he doesn't understand why, so he goes back to the source of where he got bitten by the spider, and along the way, he comes across Spider-Man! It's Spider-Man! And, and he can teach me how it's all done, how it can be done, and he dies! Spider-Man's dead. The end! Okay, you're not that dumb. <laughs> <laughs> That's not the end. But along the way before Spider-Man was killed, apparently Kingpin, a really big muscular guy who sometimes skips like that, has this Hydro Collider or something along those lines, I don't know, big old laser beam that awakens a universe. A universe that awakens a so many expectations of everything around them, like five different other Spider-Men. That's about it. No other villains and no one else but the Spider-Men. No other Hobgoblin, no other Kingpin, just... Spider-Man. And they go on an adventure! And they're gonna get together and go back home. This was a really good Spider-Man movie. It was visually artistic, it was colorful, and it was a really amazing from beginning to end. I, I really went for a thrill ride, if you will. I loved it. But when I hear a lot of people say that this is by far the best Spider-Man movie ever made, I go, well, Miles Morales as Spider-Man is, he, he's great, I love him, he's hes a really cool character, and I can see why people like him, he's, he's fun, he's uh, young, just like Peter Parker was at that age, and he has his own path, his own destiny, and it's nice to know that when he was being motivated, he wasn't just being motivated by was all you have to do is believe in yourself. Just believe in yourself. You can change that up a little bit, can't you? How about take a leap of faith? That sounds like a really good idea. And here I go saying, believe in yourself. Leap of faith. That's some unique writing. I have to say my favorite one had to go to Spider-Man Noir. Of all the Spider-Man characters, I liked him the most. Um, he was really stealth and kind of cunning. Just a cool looking character, if you will. Yeah, he wasn't a big major role like the other characters were, but I liked him. I thought he was my favorite one. A little serious, a little gritty, but cool. Peter B. Parker, the amazing Spider-Man Parker, was, uh, he was nice. It was nice to see that Peter Parker can sometimes lose himself in his own journey, in his own life. He doesn't have to be this awesome, cool kind of person that everyone looks up to. Sometimes you can just lose your way along the road. And I like that version of Peter Parker. It's unique, it's different, it's something I haven't seen before. Seeing Gwen as Spider-Woman, that's nice. First time we've seen a Spider-Woman in an actual silver screen, that's really great. She's strong, she's awesome. And she does it in such a really charismatic way without having to throw it in your face that she's Spider-Woman. Great character, awesome job. Anime Spider-Man was a bit underwhelming. She didn't really uh, do too much, but for what it's worth, she wasn't bad. And of course, there's Spider-Pig, the comic relief Spider-Man. Even though Spider-Man in himself is a comic relief, but this just goes to show you that they can, they can go silly in every way, shape, or form. The villains, I have to say Doc Ock, the female Doc Ock, in case you haven't seen the film, probably stole the show as far as villainy is concerned. Better than Kingpin ever was. Kingpin was just this large looking character, and that was it. He had, a, he had a backstory to some degree, but it wasn't strong enough. The girl who played Doc Ock, or the, or the woman in this case, she was cool. I liked her. She's like, yeah, I'm cost. She, she took me by surprise, so I liked that. She was great. To say this is the best Spider-Man movie that was ever made, I would agree, but to an extent. I'd still sort of disagree. Why? Not that it wasn't good. It's a good film. Bit picks like 
why wasn't there another character that came from another dimension besides these Spider-Man? Why only just a few Spider-Man? Why not other, why not Venom? Why not Green Goblin from another dimension or Scorpion from another dimension? Or was it Scorpio? Crap. Uh-oh. I forgot his name. Shit. Uh, moving on. Is it because when Peter Parker stuck his head in through that vortex laser thingamajiggy and saw through other dimensions it allowed other characters that are from other dimensions that are Spider-Man to make their way into that dimension? I don't know. I think it's a Spider-Man that shows different angles. That you could see Spider-Man through different angles and I like that. You could see it more than just one standard way. There's different feels, different levels, different angles, different sides that you can see Spider-Man in. And to say that it's the best Spider-Man movie, I would like to say that it's an improvement from what they've done before. Not that the other ones haven't been too bad. Sam Raimi's trilogy wasn't too bad. The Amazing Spider-Man, I know a lot of people didn't like the sequel, but it had a different nice approach. Spider-Man Homecoming was a pretty good film, had a different approach to Spider-Man and this one does as well. So as far as I'm concerned, this show, or rather this movie, has a different approach to how Spider-Man can be, and it really shows that it's not to be limited with who he is. And I think they did a phenomenal job. It's colorful, it's entertaining, and if you haven't seen this film, you should probably go see it. I don't know what the hell you were doing over the weekend. What would I give this film on a scale of one to 10? I know my friends give it a 10, and I have to give it a nine. It's a good, solid nine. It's got some nitpicks, it's got some moments, but it's a solid nine. It's a good film. It's a great film. So check this film out if you have an opportunity. I wouldn't say it's the best movie of all time in 2018. My, my number one goes to Infinity War. Sorry if you do not like that idea. So guys, thank you so much for watching. And if you haven't done so, please go ahead and leave a comment, leave a like if you haven't, that, that, that'd be great. And be sure to subscribe for more content. Also, if you haven't done so, be sure to follow me and like me on Facebook at Orlando Blau Jr. And be sure to follow me on Instagram at You May Call Me Lando. Otherwise, guys, thank you so much for watching. More content to come, I promise you on that. You guys take care, and as always,